In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood.
They read in the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up. After giving instructions to the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. Like while they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All you peoples, clap your hands. Shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord, the Most High, the awesome, is the great King over all the earth. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the his throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise, sing praise to our King, sing praise. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for upon his holy throne. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, 
resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe? In accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead, and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one, who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, raised his hands, and blessed them. As he blessed them, he parted from them, and was taken up to heaven. They did him homage, and then returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple praising God. The Gospel of the Lord. not for you to know the time of the season. In the story entitled uh, The Fugitive by the famous author Rabindranath Tagore, a family, a father returns from his wife's funeral. His boy of seven years old stands at the window with his eyes wide open and a golden amulet hanging around his neck. 
The boy is full of thoughts, much too difficult for his age. His father takes the boy in his arms and asks, the boy asks, where is mother? The father answers, in heaven, pointing toward the sky. The boy raises his eyes to the sky and gazes there long in silence. His bewildered mind searches into the night, asking that question, where is heaven? No answer comes. And the stars seem like burning tears in that ignorant darkness. Well, apparently the disciples of Jesus were asking the same question. And in the 14th chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus speaks to that very point. He says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself so that where I am, you also may be, and you know the way to the place I am going. And of course, Thomas and Philip protest. How can we know the way? asks Thomas. Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied, demands Philip. Jesus responds by saying to them, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? So what is it that Jesus had talked about with the disciples? that would help them to understand. Where is this place called heaven? And what is it like? Well, the disciples would come to realize that what Jesus talked about in this context was God. He said that wanting God was the only thing necessary, the only thing needful. He said that knowing God was like a treasure hidden in a field, or a pearl of great price, so valuable that you would sell everything that you had in order to obtain it. He said the people who are really happy, the people who are really blessed, are those who are poor in spirit because they know they need God in order to give life meaning. And later on in chapter 7 of John's Gospel, Jesus tells them all they need to know about the subject. He says, this is eternal life, to know God. Speculating about what and where is the heaven into which Jesus ascended can be a problem for each of us. After all, who hasn't wondered, what is it like? Where is it? And it's inevitable, I suppose, that we think of heaven as a geographical location. Think of all the hymns of the ages and the songs. That one that says, when my soul is called up yonder, I'll be there. But where? Or when the saints go marching in, marching. What will they be marching into? There is a, a cute story about a group of American tourists looking out toward the sea from the Italian Riviera. And one of the tourists exclaims, it looks like heaven. A local Italian woman standing nearby said, these American tourists, they've been everywhere. The truth is, from heaven, Jesus came, and to heaven, he returned. And the important thing is, not where it is, or what it's like. The really important thing is that he is not gone. 
He is not gone. He spent time after the resurrection preparing the disciples for the new way that he would be present to them in the Spirit. He also remains present in the Eucharist that he left us. I believe it was St. Leo the Great who said that when Jesus ascended, he passed into the sacraments. What a beautiful way to think of it. Because that's precisely what the church teaches us. That Jesus acts in all of the sacraments. He is present in the sacraments. It is the fundamental way which you and I come into contact with him. And all the things the Eucharist is and does, it is something we celebrate until he comes again. And this celebration sustains us and awakens in us the hope of Jesus' next and last descent. Near the end of Mark's Gospel, it says, You will see the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. And so, while we are waiting, which is precisely what we're doing, while we are waiting, we have work to do. Men of Galilee, those figures in the white robes, ask the disciples, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? These angels reminded the disciples that they are from an earthly place called Galilee, and that they have the business of proclaiming the gospel, of teaching and healing, the very business of the kingdom to do. And while they started in Jerusalem, they too, like Jesus, had to leave the city. Because Jesus has told them to be his witnesses, not only in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, but to the very ends of the earth. Even here in Madison. We come to Jerusalem to see a vision of heaven to celebrate that our Savior has come from heaven and has gone back to prepare a place for us. But like Jesus and like all his disciples who witness to him and give of themselves sacrificially, we too must also leave Jerusalem. We come not only to worship, but also, just as important, to serve. And so we take our vision and live the gospel of his kingdom in the presence of his spirit until he comes again. We leave this Jerusalem and we take our vision and live the gospel of his kingdom. Not only in the presence of his spirit, but in the presence of all who we meet so they too might come to know him. We do this in the presence of the Spirit until he comes again to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him.
When our risen Savior ascended into heaven, angels reminded his disciples that he would come back again. Until he comes, we continue his work by praying for all peoples and their needs. That the church on earth will ever keep to its evangelical mission of making disciples of all nations, we pray. Lord, that the leaders of the world may realize that they must give an account of their work to Jesus Christ when he returns as our judge, we pray. Lord, that no one will be so attached to this earth as to regret being called to eternal life in heaven, we pray. Lord, Lord, that we may all come to the maturity of faith and the fullness of the risen Christ, we pray. Lord, Lord, that all our dead may ascend to glory with Christ our priest and king, especially Carmela Maynard and John Lyons, we pray. Lord, and for all the sick, especially Lauren Ludwig, Dolores Juice, Dixie Barron, Kathy Patrizzi, Ann Lasko, Jim Andrikanich, Kathy Flanagan, George Donnelly, Barb Bertrick, Austin Gartland, Rose De Robertis, Rose DeBevick, Alan Rebar, and Pat Varga, we pray. Lord, for our blessings on all mothers, uh, living and deceased, and for those who are Expectant mothers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father in heaven, your Son is now seated at your right hand, enthroned in eternal glory. We make our petitions to Him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please open your missalettes to number 333.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good all his children. We offer sacrifice now and supplication, O Lord, in honor, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit.
thank you to have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered and be by the Bible, Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints that please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
I neglected to mention that there's a second collection, which is for the Office of Catechetical Services that helps to subsidize different religion programs in the diocese. Thank you. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. My name is Joan. I'm part of the neo-catechumenal team of catechists that are here in the parish at the invitation of Father Donnelly to announce the good news. And we've been doing that now for a few weeks. And I'm just here to say that it's never too late. God says, today is the favorable time. And if you were listening, and I'm sure you were, in the second reading, St. Paul tells the Ephesians, today we could be the Ephesians, because God wants to open the eyes of our heart, to understand his love for us, to understand that he's never going to leave us, that we can never do anything that will keep his love from, from, from us, from our lives. And I can give testimony to that, because when I listen to these catechesis, Back in New Jersey, it was a very dark time in my life. I didn't see the love of God. My father died. My brother died. Everybody seemed to be dying that I thought I'd never see again until I listened to these catechesis. And somehow the Holy Spirit was able to open the eyes of my heart to recognize that death is overcome that Jesus Christ is risen. He's gone to the Father and he wants us to be with him also. So brothers and sisters, it is not too late. We are there on Tuesday and Wednesday evening in the Global Hall from eight till nine. And there's very qualified babysitters. Uh, on a number of nights we had as many as 11 children all enjoying one another's company while their parents were listening to the good news that Jesus Christ has never forgotten you. He understands every aspect of your life, the joys, the sufferings, and all those moments of doubt. Because Philip always was doubting. Thomas was doubting. They wanted to see the Father. And brothers and sisters, we're like that. We're like that. We don't see the Father in every aspect of our life, the love that he has for us. So I encourage you. Come. If this is, uh, these are not uh, lectures or courses, simply ways that you can recognize how God has passed by in your life and he remains with you. So as you give thanksgiving today for his body and blood that we've just received, I hope that you will come and believe that the eyes of your heart can be opened and that you can know Jesus. You can know the Father. You can know by the love that he has showered down on you in the worst of times and in the best of times. So I hope you'll be able to, uh, to make it a, an appointment, huh? an appointment with the Lord on Tuesday at 8 o'clock, on Wednesday at 8 o'clock in the Global Hall for one hour free of charge. Because the prophet Isaiah says, with God everything is free and we are free. So I hope you'll come, brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us pray. <clears throat> May the gifts we have received from your altar, Lord, kindle in our hearts a longing for the heavenly homeland and cause us to press forward, following in the Savior's footsteps to the place where for our sake he entered before us, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
All praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. 